What is JavaScript? Uh, I like to point out that it's a case sensitive scripting language. And uh, this is actually one of the first problems that I think PL SQL developers can run into when they decide to start uh, trying to add some JavaScript uh, to their applications. PL SQL is pretty forgiving uh, in its naming or how you reference variables or packages or things in your PL SQL code. Uh, JavaScript, on the other hand, um, is that's one of the areas where it's it's not very forgiving. Uh, you must make sure that if something is all uppercase, you type it in all uppercase, or if something is init cap or mixed case, you need to make sure that you match however that component has been defined. Uh, JavaScript is client-side code that runs in our browser, and uh, I want to be clear that we're focusing on that aspect of JavaScript. I understand that there's server-side uh, processes and things that you can run using Node. You can do all sorts of really cool things with JavaScript, uh, but that's just not our focus today. And the other thing that I like to point out about JavaScript, because this can seem kind of confusing and weird uh, to us coming to developers uh, coming to JavaScript from the PL SQL perspective, and that is JavaScript is loosely typed, which means that there's no, there are no variable types. So when you look at PL SQL and you want some variable that's a number, you say, here's my variable, and it's a number, or here's my variable, and it's a varchar2. In JavaScript, you just say, here's my variable, and I want to use it. And as you assign it a value, then JavaScript kind of is able to uh, perform different operations uh, with that variable. And last most important thing before we hop into demo here, um, I, I will be doing several different demos throughout this training or throughout this webinar. Um, and uh, we'll explore a couple different files. And uh, yeah, so this won't just be lecture. Uh, if you want to add JavaScript to a page, you're going to have to use a script tag. So JavaScript, kind of you need HTML in some capacity to say, ah, here's the JavaScript that I want to actually run on this page. And we'll talk about how exactly that happens. And then um, alternatively, if you don't want to just write a whole bunch of JavaScript, just in a page, which I would generally discourage doing that. Uh, you can make a JavaScript file, a source file, and then reference that from your HTML page. So you could say, ah, go get the customer.js file, and that's going to maybe bring in some stuff to deal with customers, or um, go get my page five JavaScript file, and that's going to give you the functionality that you need for page five to run successfully. So let's take a look at that. All right, so uh, I have a Visual Studio Code editor open right now. Uh, you can you can download VS Code and and use it. A fairly straightforward uh, tool. And the other the other thing that I'll be using that might uh, seem kind of confusing is uh, I'm using an extension inside of VS Code called Live Server. Uh, if you want to see what that looks like, I'll open up my extensions, type Live Server. And there it is, live server. Uh, you could come over here to your extensions, search for live server, There'll be a little green install button, go ahead and click on that. Uh, and so if you have any questions as to, I'm gonna have a panel up on the right hand side of the screen here in a second. If you have any questions as to how that's updating or how that's working, uh, really I have live server is doing everything for me. That's just a web server that's local on my computer. Uh, and you'll notice that my, if you look at my, URL here in just a second, you'll see that it says localhost. That just means uh, we're kind of running something locally on this computer. Without further ado, let's take a look. Uh, so here, and there's here's what I was talking about. We have a uh, localhost, and here's my little sample code area. And at the moment, I have a web page that this is serving up. It's just uh, an index.html web page, and it has no JavaScript, nothing fancy going on. And uh, if I wanted to add some JavaScript to this page, I could add a script tag. And I could say something like alert, hello class. Uh, and now when I save this, if everything goes according to plan, uh, you can see that it says hello class. It didn't do that before, and it, but it does it now. And then my page loads. And that's all well and good and um that would that could work for a while but uh 
as your applications start to get bigger, you kind of want to get away from just writing these script tags uh, in your HTML documents or in your Apex applications. So we're actually going to go ahead and, and remove this. Uh, and here uh, you can see that I have a script tag, uh, but it's been commented out. I have a little shortcut here on my keyboard, essentially control question mark, uh, that is going to uncomment out that script tag and notice that it is pointing to a file. If I open up my little browser here, you can see this is the index.html file that I'm in, and this is referencing variables, and we can see, ah, there's variables.js here. So all this is saying is go get that variables file and load it so it's available for my page. Um, if you want to verify that you know the file is actually being loaded, uh, we can do that uh, by coming over to our page and uh, we can open up our developer tools. That's another thing that I'm going to be using quite regularly. And that's something that you should be using as uh, an Apex developer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F12. And by pressing F12, I have opened up my uh, developer tools. And at this moment, uh, I'm really interested in my network because I just want to verify that this file was indeed loaded. Let me go ahead and save these changes here, and my file should reload. And I can see right here, uh, localhost variables.js, uh, it's a JavaScript file that has been loaded. Um, there are many features here that you can explore in, the, in this uh, web developer tools. I'm not gonna focus on those today, but um, at the last um, oh, Apex at Home, uh, there was uh, a couple talks about getting to know your developer tools and, and whatnot. So I would thoroughly uh, recommend you to you know go ahead and, and uh, check those out. But we're going to go ahead and spend our time here in the console. A console is just a way for us to observe output of our JavaScript. And at the moment, I just have a blank blinking cursor, and it's kind of small. Let me go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so you can see. And now we're gonna go take a look at our variables.js file and see what's going on in there. And at the moment, it's just a whole bunch of comments. There's nothing going on. So let's start by uh, declaring a variable. And uh, I need to talk a little bit about this because uh, this is the first like major tip I think uh, that I have for uh, JavaScript developers. One is all I did was just make a name and I assigned it a number and I called it num, I gave it 10 and it became available for me to use. The other thing that I think uh, a lot of developers might not be aware of is that uh, everything that we do, like the everything that we do has a scope and the top level scope of the things that we do uh, in the browser in using JavaScript is the window. And so when you make a variable num, you're actually kind of adding a property to the window. And I just, just to prove that here, you can see that when I say window.num, uh, it also yields 10. And just to prove that that's the same thing, I'll change this to 11, I'll save. Uh, and uh, we can see that, yep, you can see that both of those kind of reflect that value. Now, just assigning the value like this is a little bit, um, while it, it will work, it's not very clear that, are you just assigning the value? Are you declaring a, a new variable that you then want to assign the value to? It's not obvious at all um, that that is something that you can do. So, uh, or it's not obvious at all that that's what's happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to uncomment out this use strict, and we're going to save. And now, rather than running, I get an error. It says assignment to undeclared variable num. And this is great because this lets me know that I wasn't just changing the value of num. I was actually declaring var the variable num and trying to assign it a value. So how do I resolve that? Well, I need to put some sort of keyword in front of this to let JavaScript know that that's actually a variable that I'm declaring and assigning a number. So now that I say var, everything kind of continues to run nicely. Um, I don't have to just uh, declare 
uh, numbers, I can make string literals and notice that string literals can use single ticks uh, just like we use uh, in PL SQL. If you're not comfortable with single ticks, maybe you're used to using uh, double ticks, um, you, can, you can use that instead and that's totally fine. Uh, whichever one you choose to use is, is fine, just be consistent. If you're typically using single ticks, then keep consistently using single ticks. If you're using double ticks, then continue, then go ahead and use that. All right. Now, I've declared this variable here using the var keyword, uh, but there's actually other ways that I can do it. Let me show you this. 